Hello and welcome back to my channel, Crafty Concepts with Erin. I'm Erin and I'm here today with the Creative Design team bringing you a collaboration on celebrating fathers. So for my contribution to our Celebrating Fathers collaboration, I chose these photos of my husband and our two boys. And you can see they're just about as tall as him, passing him up, and they think that's fantastic. But I'm going to document these photos, and I love the brick texture and the blue and the grays in the picture. And I am wanting to use the Noteworthy Paper Pack. If you're not familiar with that, I'll just show you. It's in the core catalog. And I, I would show you the paper pack, but I don't have much left and it's all cut up. But it's lined paper and ledger paper, music paper. There's bullet journal, journal paper and graph paper. And one side's white and the other side is like this worn vintage look. So I am going to use this lined piece today as my main background. I just love this paper. So you can see here, the other side is white. It's just, you know, like a classic crisp white. And then this vintage look on the opposite side. So I want to harness that vintage look and kind of play that up on today's layout. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna get these matted on some black cardstock. So I cut a piece of cardstock and I went around with my edge distressor and roughed that up. When I'm creating masculine layouts, especially for older boys, I really like to incorporate that kind of grunge look, the, the um, distressing. I think it just really complements their photos. At least it does for my boys. So let me scoot that up and we're gonna go right center like that. So I am doing a little stash diving. These are both retired stamps. This one's called Make It Count. This one's really old, been around a long time. And this one is called Then and Now. And both of these have kind of a timeless vintage feel to them. So I thought they would be a nice addition. So I'm going to use this big circular clock element here. And I'm using Distress Oxide Vintage Photo. Now typically I would not stamp with Distress Oxide sides they're not my first choice for stamping because they just don't stamp as well as other inks do but with that said I want a kind of distressed vintage vibe so if it doesn't stamp well that is perfectly fine by me so we'll get this nice and inky and I want my clock to be upright here that looks good so I was just kind of hold it over my photo where I want it and then scoot the photo out of the way and just press down. Give it a second to soak into your layout before you, uh, you know, remove your stamp and then just lift directly up. And, you know, you can see with the Distress Oxides, you get this kind of modeling look. I don't know if you guys can actually see that. It doesn't stamp real clear. There you can see it now. But again, that's the look I'm going for. So that is perfect. To add some visual texture to the background, I have this very old stencil. I cut it myself with stencil film. Close to my heart used to carry stencil paper. I cut it on my Cricut, I think from the Art Philosophy collection. And I just like this design. I'm going to add a little bit in, in different places around the layout. So maybe a little bit down there. And I know I'm going to want some up in the upper right hand corner. So we're going to create that kind of diagonal line. And I want the stencil to have like a very natural shape. I don't want it to be square or, you know, any particular shape. So just kind of fading away into irregular edges, if you will. Stencils are so much fun. They're great to have in the craft room. They don't take up a lot of space. You can use them over and over and over again and get different looks each time. I like to bring my photos back in and just make sure that it is going where I want it to go. And I do want to extend that a little bit further to the right. So we'll just drag a little more color out and there, that looks better. So I want to do some stamping over the top of where I stenciled. On this particular stamp, there's this scripty font, which is awesome. And I'm going to ink that up in the same vintage photo and I'm going to use first, second, and third generation stamping. So I'm gonna stamp it once, twice, three times, all before re-inking it. And then it just gets lighter each time in you know, giving that aged look. I'm going to repeat that up here and you'll notice I'm going kind of, you know, back and forth left and right too because I want that to look intentionally messy or irregular. 
I did a little more stash diving and found these Picture My Life cards or pocket cards from the Hawthorne collection and which that is no longer available but it was a fantastic a masculine paper pack. So I'm going to just do some tucking and layering behind my photos with these pocket cards. This is a great way to use up those cards if you have a bunch sitting around. You just create layers with them and then this one was already cut in half so I'm going to slide half of it up top here and then this piece down at the bottom to make it look like one continuous piece. I'm not sure I'll keep that lower piece, but we'll leave it there for now and see how the layout, layout progresses. So I'm going to add some hands to my clock face. There's the minute hand and then the hour hands. I'm gonna ink that up in black ink and let's see, what time should we make it? There's really no rhyme or reason here. <laughs> so just a decorative element. And then I'll grab the hour hand and let's see, how about, Hmm, 940, close enough. I like to use my stamp chamois as I go just to keep things tidy so I don't have a giant mess when I'm done with my layout. There's also this row of numbers on this stamp set and I love the look of this stamp. So I'm going to turn it this way just to make it easier to line up. And I want it straight in line with my photos but slightly underneath them. So we'll just move the photos out of the way, give it a good press and there, that's gonna look really cool. I encourage you to look at your stamp sets and try to see beyond the obvious intended purpose for your stamps. You're going to get so much more use out of them and it just comes with time and practice. But I absolutely love stamping on my layout. I think it's a lot of fun and you can really get some neat custom looks as well. These photos were taken in an old historic gold mining town and it's a really fun place to take pictures because there's old brick buildings and old rustic wooden barns. I mean, so many cool backdrops and opportunities for photos, it's perfect. It's not often I get a picture of all my menfolk at once when they're not like working. Usually they're work photos trying to accomplish <laughs> some project. So I love to have pictures like this. Flipping through my embellishments, I came across this pack of Candid Moments die cuts, and these are like a faux wood chipboard. Anything that is still available, I will of course leave listed in the description box below for you, but I'm gonna offset that on the left-hand side with this piece, and I think that's gonna look good, but I don't like how the background is all showing through, so I cut a piece of almond cardstock. I chose something similar to the background because I wanted that to blend in, and I can stamp something on that here in a moment. This is a little cluster of tickets that I fussy cut from one of the pocket cards and I'm going to create a little cluster in this corner here. I'm going to angle the tag so it's kind of popping up like that and then I stamped in um, sapphire ink this little pocket watch and I'm going to layer that right over the top. So I am going to get rid of that piece and then work on my title. So this stamp is called Father. This was from the April or March and April catalog and you can see their definitions. There's one for mother, which I used on my celebrating mother uh, layout and I wanted to use this one, but rather than use the word father with the definitions, I'm going to use my classic alphabet dies and cut out the word dad from Sapphire cardstock. And I cut that, you know, enough to layer up my die cut. So I ran it through a couple times. I always like to stack up my die cuts and give them just a little bit more dimension. So if you use liquid glue, you can slide those into place and it's really quick and simple. These are a nice, thick, chunky die. And it, again, it's the classic alphabet and they are about an inch and a half tall. Since all the guys are wearing blue jeans in the photo, I thought it'd be fun to accent with some sapphire blue cardstock on the layout just to kind of give it a little bit of a pop because we have a lot of earthy neutrals going on so introducing that blue is just going to liven it up just a bit. Since Close to My Heart's cardstock has that white core you can sand it and get this cool distressed look so to go along with the feel of the rest of the layout I definitely want to scuff this up just a little bit so I'm using just a basic uh, nail file here. Actually this was intended for crafting. I bought these a long time ago at a craft store but a nail file will definitely do the trick. I thought about uh, die cutting out the word father, but it had been a little bit too big and maybe just too much for this space. So dad works and the boys call him dad anyway, so that actually makes sense. Now I'm gonna stamp the definitions underneath and it's super handy 
that there's lines on this paper. And so that makes the process pretty darn easy to line these up. So I am practicing on this scratch paper before I stamp each time. I know you can't see it because it was off on the right hand side, but definitely, definitely, definitely stamp on a piece of scratch paper before you stamp on your layout. Trust me. I cut a tab from the tags or tabs thin cut set. And again, I'm gonna sand this so it matches the alphas. And then I'm gonna layer this up over the top so we have a little pop of blue up top to balance that out. From the same Hawthorne collection, there was a couple word phrases. This one says good stuff. And then I'm actually gonna bump that up a little bit. This next one says moments like this, and I'm going to pop those up on foam tape. So now I have another stamp from my stash, and I'm going to stamp the date on this little area right here. So this one has the lines, and then I'll just fill in the numbers for the date that these photos were taken. I'm one of those that has to have the date on my layout. I don't know what it is. I just need the date to be there. So it can be in the journaling or just kind of randomly on the layout, but that's one element I always include. I folded that corner of the pocket card and then I'm noticing right here, I need something. It's just this kind of empty hole. It feels very out of balance to me. So I cut this little tag from the same pocket card that we layered up top and then this is another one of those faux wood wood chipboard pieces and then these are hawthorne wood shapes from that same collection and this says hero and that is like oh that's perfect when, when else am i going to use that but on a dad layout and then we'll point the arrow towards the word hero to just kind of create that title I'll hold it up so you can get a closer look at all that layered stamping and how cool that looks on the background. And then we just have layered pocket cards, super, super easy. So I am the last video in this particular collaboration. So if you have not caught the rest of the creative design team videos, you can catch it right here in this playlist. If you're not already a subscriber, I would love to have you join the community. So click that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.